Hi, and welcome to this mini lecture about secure multiparty computation. In the next few minutes, we are going to have a very quick and basic introduction to this topic. Let's use a serious example from the real world. We consider a group of anonymous alcoholics who want to compute the average number of beers that the group drank the day before. But no one of them would like to reveal his own number of beers to the others. A possible solution to this problem consists in bringing there their common friend Steve, who is trusted by everyone, and to outsource the private amount of beers of each one to Steve. In this way, he can compute the average value on the behalf of the group. But what if there is no such a friend as Steve? So what can they do in this case? Just to repeat the problem, how can they compute the average number of beers in such a way that they cannot get any information about the amount drunk by the others? A really simple solution is the following. One of the alcoholics picks randomly a number, 42 in our example, and keeps it secret. He then adds his own amount of beers drank the day before to this random value. Then he passes this new value on to the next alcoholic. Note that the second guy cannot guess the number of beers drank by the first one, since that 45 could be the sum of 42 and 3, but also of 40 and 5, and also of 41 and 4, and so on. Now the second alcoholic adds his private amount of beers to the received value, and passes it further on the next one and so on and so forth, until it reaches again the first guy. Now it can just remove the random value 42 and retrieves the sum of all the beers drunk. Then it can just divide this value by the total number of participants, get the average value and broadcast it to the others. In this way, we were able to compute the average without leaking the number of beers of each participant. If you are wondering how this example may fit in the resample project, let's try to replace the group of alcoholics with a group of hospitals and replace the amount of beers with patients' records that the hospital do not want to share with the others, maybe for privacy concerns. And instead of computing the average of the values, let's compute a predictive model, for instance, a neural network on the hospital's private data. I think we have now seen enough examples to generalize a definition. Secure multiparty computation is a technique that allows a group of participants, let's say P1, PN, each of them holding some kind of private data, let's say x1 to xn, to collectively compute a function f on this data as inputs, without leaking any more information than what can be deduced by each party just by knowing its own secret value x and the output of the function. In other words, the information leaked is the same as the information that would be leaked if a trusted third party is used to compute the function as in the Steve example we saw before. Till now, we have assumed that all the participants act fairly and honestly. But what if one or maybe more participants do not? Secure multiparty computation protocols can reach different level of security depending on how a possible adversary is modeled. There are two main security models that are usually considered. The first one is the semi-honest model, where one or more parties can collude and work together to gather information about the private inputs of the honest parties. The second one is the malicious model, where we suppose that the enemies are even able to arbitrarily deviate from the protocol execution. In other words, in the second model, the adversary is not forced to follow the protocol indications. In the resample project, we are aiming to guarantee at least security against 
n-1 colluding parties in the semi-honest settings. In the anonymous alcoholics example, the protocol we saw is not secure against true malicious adversaries. Can you see why? If you want to stop here and try to think on it for some minutes, otherwise, here it is the last remark or the last topic I would like to show you. In a complex setting, it becomes more difficult to create a secure multi-party computation protocol. And in order to do that, we usually require some cryptographic tools, for instance, homomorphic encryption. But what is homomorphic encryption? Well, in short, it is just an encryption scheme that let us perform some operations, some computations on the ciphertext. To give you a better understanding of this, let's take back our example and note that we use the sort of homomorphic encryption even in that context. Can you remember? We have uh, the first alcoholic uh, who picks uh, a random value and sum it to its private amount in order to hide that. We can see this as an encryption if we want. So we have here our plain text that is free. The first guy applies the encryption, which is add 42, and we get the ciphertext that is 45. Then the ciphertext is given to the other participants who perform an operation that in our case is the sum on the ciphertext. And at the end, we have the decryption, which is subtract 42, getting back to the plain text domain and also getting the result and concluding the protocol. This also concludes this mini lecture about secure multi-party computation. I hope that it was informative and clear and thank you for your attention.